Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash rollforcrit. Welcome to Roll for Crit. Today we are talking to two of the design team from Horrible Guild. Uh, it is Lorenzo and Yalmar. Thank you for joining us all the way from Italy. So if, if there are any connection issues or anything like that, that is yeah. the reason why. <laughs> yeah, we've got to, we've, we're dealing with time differences. We're dealing with all kinds of things. Uh, but yeah. you guys are the team behind uh, King's Dilemma, and we just we just played a game together of Railroad Inc. Uh, Challenge, which was a lot of fun, and you completely destroyed both of us, yeah. especially me. <laughs> Uh, but you have a lot of, of things, a lot of projects in the works. So I mean, why don't we talk with Railroad Inc. Uh, that was recently a successful Kickstarter. It was fully funded. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, maybe talk about that game a little bit. Uh, what went into it? What went into it in terms of the design and everything like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Whichever one of you wants to go. Uh, it's a problem when you're two. Uh, this is a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we know uh, we have the same thing. Yeah. So uh, you know we we have the classic railroad ink, which was actually uh, a very good selling board game and had uh, its uh, success. And we thought to uh, like tackle on the things that we thought could be made better with the experience we had about. Uh, uh, the game before and so we created Railroad Inc. Challenge and actually uh, the nice thing about that I mean uh, about doing it on Kickstarter was that uh, it, 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 we had so many people following it that it was uh, we were able to create all those expansions so uh, they could never be they could never have been ex existed as a like standalone pro product that we would have done like uh, thinking, okay, we we will we are going to do twenty seven expansions and sell them on and, the market, and, right? And probably and probably now we have too many expansions <laughs> <laughs> to play all of them in in a lifetime. So um, it's, it's, yeah, we we are testing expansion since months, and it's what we do all the day at the moment. We test expansion, test expansion, more expansion. It's, <laughs> Well, I know most board gamers are pretty fine with that. They're always willing to take another expansion to add to their box. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that was actually quite fun also from a design point of view because we had to like really uh, look at all the spaces that this game had to offer and do something that normally you don't because you are restricted from the market. But uh, when you have a direct contact with the people that, that yeah, buy the games directly from you, you really can do those kinds of stuff. You can experiment with with crazy expansions, and that's what we did. And now we are yeah. we are trying to uh, deliver yeah, we, on it. <laughs> we also we also listen and listen to what people asked and to some ideas, and we tried to to find a way to make uh, expansions because some of the expansions were created during the Kickstarter because we didn't expect it to have. Um, well, we were hoping to have so many backers, but you you, you cannot be prepared to uh, big numbers like that. So we had to um, collect the idea of people, and uh, and we started to think about um, a new expansion, all the uh, Cthulhu and uh, rituals uh, uh, expansion were were like suggested by some backers. Uh, not not the mechanic, just the theme, and we 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 found a way to create a mechanic using that theme, and um, well, it's it was a very very nice experience. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun, and and the community was so so nice. We we did a, a like a, a live video playing with 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 our backers, and it was really nice to have all all those people just like. Uh, playing with us and which is a thing you can do with with only few games this is a positive thing of railroad ink you can really play it like f through 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 the video i mean mm -hmm. uh, remotely and and 
And so we we could play all together, and it was really really fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to hear that the community was. Uh, kind and responsive. I think usually the board game community is that way, but sometimes with the internet, <laughs> you never know. There can be uh, uh, bad apples out there. Yeah, but it's, it's that, gonna that's encouraging. <laughs> yeah, and you've done, um, I think, a, most of a lot of your stuff, not most, maybe a lot of it through Kickstarter. So obviously that's been pretty uh, successful for you guys. How's any of that, how much of that maybe has changed or has anything been affected by obviously the pandemic and every that's going on right now in the world, or is it still a pretty positive experience overall? For, uh, for us, um, we we had in March, um, we we were a little bit scared, like everybody in the beginning, and we immediately decided to switch um, all all the plans that we had for retail to switch everything on Kickstarter because many of our partners started to have problems, lockdown, they had to close, they had to stop, the um, distributor in the US had to uh, slow down, uh, no more shipment, no more. So man, many problems started and because we, we didn't have a clear idea of how long this um, could this last and it's, it's not ended yet in many parts of the world and also i hope that in italy it will really end but we are not sure at the moment um so we decided to switch on kickstarter everything and it it was a very good uh decision because uh we have been able to make uh, railroad inc and vendetta was already planned for kickstarter uh but for railroad inc we had some doubt to to go out directly um, retail, uh, so we decided to go on Kickstarter, and that was super. And we have other two projects that will um, arrive on Kickstarter um, in the next uh, months before the end of the year. So we have two more that will come. We will announce the next one in a few days. Um, I, I'm I'm suffering because I would like to tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it makes you feel better, this video won't be going up for another week. So, <laughs> okay, so it will be starter of the second edition of Dungeon Fighter. That Ooh. it's one uh, of um, our first game. Uh, Ten years since the first release, so we decided to have a completely renewed second edition that will be launched on Kickstarter. Uh, in the end of August. Awesome. Nice. That, that's oh, my... <laughs> I, I, I am not sure what I can tell more. <laughs> you know, you know, the, there was a saying in Apple, right? Uh, it would be strange to have a ship that leaked from the top, but we have it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good saying. I like that. <laughs> so that's that and, uh, you know, railroading challenge also kind of, uh, a second edition. How, how do you approach something like that when you you know you're, you go you'll go back and re redesign certain aspects of a game? Do, do you? I mean, does every game that you put out do you look at it and feel like there's things you want to change, <laughs> or there's some games you feel like are perfect <laughs> and you don't you need know, to go back to? I think that we we would like to change many things, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, our experience is 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 growing. We are learning game after game, so. Uh, when we look back, uh, especially, I, I have games that are 11, 12 years old, like Horse Fever, and we did Unicorn Fever because the game was had something that was super cool, but other parts were a little bit old in some ways, looking at the market at the moment. And Yalmar, you want to change something? Oh. <laughs> no, uh, I, I think we already do it like in the normal design process. So we actually tend to finish games and then tear them apart and do already like a second edition of the game in the process of, of building uh, uh, new games. I mean, uh, uh, it, it's brand new for the people who, who see it for the first time, but we, we kind of uh, live with those games and so they become old also for us. And we do that, uh, we do that process, but it has to stop at a certain point, right? You cannot always 
throw away the whole thing and, and just rebuild it from scratch or, or do a renovation of it. So we arrived to a point, but then with the experience, with the time seeing also, and most importantly, what, what the public has to say about it, because at the end, the games we make are for the people who play them, not just to like, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, to play around and, and do them. We want people to enjoy them. And so through those feedbacks, we, we try to get the right things out of those feedbacks and, and to to redesign and to really think carefully about what, what worked and what didn't work. Because this is, could seem an easy task after so many years, uh, but it's not an easy part and it's not an easy task to know what what should i listen to uh, those guys saying that or those saying that or myself mm -hmm. saying this so yes it's it's kind of um yeah not an easy job on that part yeah, and yeah. kickstarter helps with that because you can literally see people putting their money there if they agree with you which so far people seem to be very uh positive with uh, your ideas yeah, sure but uh, going on, we mentioned it, but then we got ex uh, excited with the new Kickstarter. I guess it'd be late by the time this video comes out, announcement. <laughs> but uh, you mentioned Vendetta. So uh, why don't we talk a little mm. bit about that? Yeah. yeah. Vendetta was, um, was was a project a little bit different for, for us because, uh, well, first of all, it's not our design. It's, uh, it's a design uh, from Charlie Cleveland that it's a very famous video game designer. Um, he is the designer of Subnautica. That is a very mm. big indie indie game that uh, sure. it's a very cool game. And um, he designed Vendetta together with uh, Bruno Faidutti. And so we, we, we encountered um, Faidutti and, uh, and Charlie uh, a few years ago in, in an event in French, in French um and we had the chance to test the game it was many years ago um, so every game took always a lot of years um and we decided to um, to to develop the game and in the end we we did a lot of work in in horrible but uh keeping the the concept keeping the um the core of of the gameplay uh then we had obviously to test uh, and and develop the game. Then with the Kickstarter, we had to um, increase, improve, and we had to work with Charlie and Bruno. And um, it, it was a, very different from us because usually we um, we when we work on our stuff, we already with uh, on our design, we already have uh, the, the final vision on how the game have to be in the end. So me and Yalmar already have a vision on uh, the final product, even if we are still on a prototype. We, we try to figure out how it will be in the end. Um, taking the game from someone else, it, it was super interesting experience because we had to, uh, well, make everything work and it's a completely different process, but in the end, we had a uh, super good results, I think. And in a few months, the game will arrive to the backers, and I'm looking forward to to hear what people will say. Yeah, it it has a very cool uh, team team mode where you play in in teams, and I think that's that's making the game even better because we 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 tested it in in the last months and yeah. and it was really fun with that with that version was really fun that, that, I think. that was something that we had to to create for the kickstarter because the people were asking to have a game up to six players but hmm. there there was it, it was too hard to have the game for six players. So we had to make a workaround and find a way. And in the end, uh, the, the idea, if I tell you now, it seems quite easy, okay? And the <laughs> pe player plays in team. It's uh, three <laughs> teams of two. And when I say it seems easy, but um, to have this, this idea and to find a good solution to improve it, uh, it took some effort, and in the end, we're super happy of the results because the game in team, uh, it's 
even better than the basic game probably because it <laughs> it's it's super fun. <laughs> And that's actually on uh, Tabletopia right now, so people can try yeah. that out, right? And uh, yeah, Vampire the Masquerade seems to be having kind of a like a renaissance right now in the in the board game world, in the tabletop world. Yeah. Uh, and then and then we have uh, we mentioned it, we talked about it a little bit before Unicorn Fever, which I think is just uh, or at least I see credited uh, was just Lorenzo on that one as designer between the two of you. Yes. Uh, or maybe talk a little bit about that game. I'm also curious about, you know, I lost, I lost a few seconds. What's the game you're talking about? Oh, uh, Unicorn Fever. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> There's no technical difficulties we warn people about. Um, I, like, I was wondering if you could talk about too, you know, the what the process is like between designing together, designing just one of you with someone else, or when, like we said with uh, Vendetta, when it's just you're more hands off and you're like tweaking the end result. Do you? Is there one of those you prefer uh, to, to work as? Do you like to just design something alone or together and then bring it to each other to test? My favorite mode is to design together, to be honest. It's, uh, uh, I think that it's the way we can reach the best results. Um, and me and Yalmar find out that we have a very um, similar way to to work and to understand um, what, what what the game is and what we have to do. And at the same time, we have uh, very different, not tastes in game, but uh, we, we enjoy uh, different things. Uh, just to make an example, I am a little bit more, uh, I, I don't really like long, long time strategies, for example, uh, where Yalmar really enjoys. Uh, to to plan um, and we have we have other differences uh, like this but every one of us can understand uh, and and trust the other one when when there is a feedback on something that he feels uh, I, I am a little bit more em emotional on on how I like games Yalmar is a little bit more uh, rational probably uh, hmm. I would say it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good way to, yeah. to describe it. <laughs> I, I think sense. it's it's really hard to explain what it is because it's like you you try to find those words right to just give a, 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 a to make the other people understand what what the differences are, but they are more subtle than 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 this, yeah. obviously. But but uh, it's completely true. I mean. Um, we we work very well together, and uh, I think we reach uh, a whole new level by working together. By but because it it really stretches and pushes the limits of what we can do, and on the other hand, it also like makes the games more broad because we are and uh, we are putting together two different visions. Still, we are pointing in the same direction. So yeah. it's broad, but focused and to a uh, specific end result. Yeah, well, I, th I think the results speak for themselves. And that's, you know, that's good that you have a, it's good to have a, a balance and like difference in how things work. Will, what do you think? Are you the, are we the more, who's the more emotional and rational one of the two of us? Do we have a, do we have a um, partnership? Yeah. I, I, I... I think I would be the emotional one, mostly just because I can't control it, not not in a good way. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not game designers, but it's I think you know similar similar principles maybe. Uh, and I, also, we should say congratulations. Although you did not win, we found out you were nominated for Kenner Spiel. Uh, Thank you recently, which is very exciting. Actually, I'm curious what your take is on this, uh, especially, you know, for coming from a non-American point of view, because we always talk about, uh, especially this year, we've been talking about the the weight, the complexity of those games, and w whether or not they belong in certain categories. And The King's Dilemma, for instance, is, a, I think, a much more complex game than either the crew or cartographers, which were nominated in the same category, is that something that you think of, or did it? Does it seem like? Did you feel like you? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you were just thrilled to be nominated for <laughs> for something, but uh, I don't know. Does is that something ever cross your mind, or has anyone ever brought that up to you? Yeah, I 
I sent an email and I told him, hey, the King's Dilemma is too complex for this this award. You should uh, <laughs> take <laughs> it out. And... <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not logical. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah of course yeah you, you really should do that uh no. but i mean that was yeah go ahead Pro probably probably uh reading the 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 rules of the, of the kenner spiel yeah probably uh the king's dilemma is it's a little bit uh too complex and in the in the end we didn't want so uh probably they wanted to i don't know maybe a war award us anyway uh, with the nomination for the originality of the game maybe even if it was a little bit um, too complex for the price what do you think Yelmar? It's... yeah yes I, I i think it was like this and and it shows that that it's not only a price uh for the market but also a price for for i mean innovation for... maybe for innovation also but i mean a little bit still uh, obviously they give uh, they they tell people what they should buy with this price right and if you have a game that is 14 plus and it could cost 70 bucks and it's uh, 15 games long if you you have to play with the same group during a pandemic i mean uh, it's it's uh, right yeah i i just i'm just really happy that they know nominated us because it, no one would have said that such a game could could go in and and i'm i'm really happy about that and we are really happy we we did a lot of party after knowing that <laughs> uh, so thank you spiel des Jahres, for all the party you gave us um <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well, what, we're yeah, still I having mean, part <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't need it Excuses. We just need excuses because <laughs> <laughs> understandable. Well, I mean, for, on our end, we I think we said while we haven't played every legacy game, I I think John would agree with me. This is De uh, King's Dilemma is our favorite by a very good margin. Same yeah, that, that style. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was in our top ten list. It was my number one last last year for the year and. Uh, yeah, we really it's like super innovative as as you were as you were saying. Our our group has really enjoyed it. And it's been painful for us, as you said. Uh we never we haven't gotten to finish our campaign because of the pandemic. We've yeah. been split up from our group. Uh we, we need to maybe find a way to do that remotely. But my snakes get... will triumph. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you guys have I mean, we talked about all the games we've talked about today are so they vary so much, not just in their weight, but in just the genres and and gameplay. You have uh, a very uh, widespread uh, variety of different designs. Would you say there's like a is there something that is in common with all your designs that ties them together you think that's like a signature thing that you have or do you always go in and it could be a completely different experience every time that's a that's hard, a hard question, question. <laughs> asking the hard questions here <laughs> it's, it's very hard because uh, in the end everything is it's completely different and we try to put always something that that it's like a small twist or something new somewhere that could be um, the aesthetic, the um, uh, the mechanic or or a mix of of the things so, or the final product. And uh, but in the end, I think that we just follow um, what what we like and what we want to do, and we try to do it. Uh, in the most original and innovative way, uh, and at the same at the same time trying to keep it um, commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, not something commercial. that you cannot. Yeah, yeah commercial. Sorry. Um, yeah, that that that's the idea. We, we always try to 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 mix innovation and um, and and and. and Try to make a product that can sell on the market, and we try to balance this, this things. I yeah, I think there is really a point here because we 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 are both designers and uh, publishers of of yeah. the game, 
So this right. makes for, uh, uh, and we both have a very strong feel for aesthetics and need for aesthetics and for um, cleanness of design, of uh, rule sets. So the, the, those things all go together. And, uh, and it's kind of, we want to make the best game we can around an, an idea. But we are not constrained by a certain typology of game, a certain kind of game, because ideas just come uh, with no uh, tags on them, right? So it's not that you have an idea and it's, it tells you, I am a German game idea. I mean, it, <laughs> it could be, but, but then you, you just follow the idea and try to make the best game you can. And still, we are also thinking about the end product. So I think this is, this is kind of the thing that makes all those products on those games uh, unique in a certain way because it's really King's Dilemma is a crazy game. It's so strange in so many parts of it. And, and, but still, it has a simple rule set. It's um, playable by a broad audience. Uh, and we think we really cleaned it from junk and stuff you actually don't want. That It's actually detracting from the story. So we did this kind of job, and and yeah, I think this is what what differs from our products and maybe the products of someone else. So I mean, we're it's not like we design like Stefan Feld is is one where you know he's going to make <laughs> that kind of game, and yeah, he's yeah, doing it in many many different ways. And I think it's great also to see that you can do something like this. That there is so mm. much space there. In, in the Stefan Feld world, right? But, sure. but we don't do that kind of stuff. We, we just go, we just follow those ideas and we yeah. try to make them the best we can. And, and in some way, this makes us, um, it damages us in some way because uh, people is not able to uh, identify what's the kind of game that uh, Silva and Hack can do. Um, or, or people will will never know what to expect for the next year because we, we are continuing to change. So we don't have a, a huge fan base of people that loves what we did and they know that we will do it again. We are like a um, uh, heavy metal band that then makes a punk rock um, <laughs> EP and, yeah. and, and, and then uh, reggaeton pop uh, thing after that. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, you're, the you're radio. To be a little bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, you keep things interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> that's, yeah, we, that's, we that's what counts. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, it's a, it's a fascinating way of doing it. And I feel like that's kind of how my my brain works that way more too is that I'm like yeah I would I would want to play in different worlds and try to explore new ideas every time well thank you so much for for talking to us all about all the different games and some of your uh, design process some insight into that it was really fascinating and for speaking to us all the way from Italy and in English that's we appreciate it very much <laughs> I, for next time we're going to learn Italian so we can sure, talk to you sure. Italian. <laughs> very easy to learn <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we'll work on it I'm sure I'll learn what time is it It'll take me about a year. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'd love to talk to you guys again. It's a lot of fun. And if anyone out there hasn't tried them out, uh, try if you can get your hands on the King's Lemon Seat and try to be able to get a group to play it with right now if you can. Uh, and all the other games that we discuss. And look forward to uh, more Kickstarters coming up from you guys later in the year. Yeah. Uh, and if anyone wants to uh, follow you guys in the future, I mean, uh, Kickstarter, uh, HorribleGuild.com, yeah. I guess. And uh, you guys are on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, follow them there, too. All right. Thank, Thank you. you again. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See Bye. you soon. This has been Bye. Roll for crit. Yeah. <laughs>
thanks to all our members of our Patreon page for making this show possible. You can sign up for exclusive benefits or help us by liking and subscribing. You can also take a quick survey to help us improve Roll for Crit. And in exchange, you'll receive access to a Patreon-exclusive podcast episode. Stay up to date on all our Gen Con online coverage, including live gameplay at RollForCrit.com. 